Hey, hey, man, what the fuck is going on, man? God damn. Now it's back to hot again, fucking with a nigga sinuses and shit. Man, what is going on? See, I'm drinking some mullen tea. All the goddamn caliche and shit everywhere. Woo. Mullen tea gets you right. Man, man, man. Sinuses all fucked up and shit. Man, what is going on? What is going on? I had to drink some tea. I had to take some motherfucking sea moss and shit. I can't take too much of that shit to shit. have you up all night. But anyway, man, what is going on, man? Man, we are back in black in the building. Shit, this is the only building I know. I bet. <laughs> while, I'm t- <laughs> while I'm talking all this shit, the nigga better get his ass to work. A nigga, I'm gonna be doing a podcast outside with no power, nigga. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be like them niggas at the mall and shit, plugging my laptop into a motherfucking outlet and shit, trying to bounce off somebody's Wi-Fi. Talking about, hey y'all, <laughs> we back in black <laughs> and mother, <laughs> and motherfucking <laughs> Bath and Body Works with my shit plugged up. Fuck out of here, nigga. Y'all niggas. <laughs> but anyway, man, what is going on, man? Man, shout out to everybody out there, man. It's out to the motherfuckers. But this shit fuck with niggas sinuses. That shit dropped to like 90 degrees. Just stay hot, man. Give me the hot and the cold. I don't like the in-between. Unless it's in October. That's my favorite month. The niggas that know me, they know why it's my favorite month. But anyway, man, shout out to everybody out there, man. Doing all this other shit, man. We finna get into a lot of shit, man. We gonna talk about rape culture. Hey, hey, hey. And we gonna talk about Van Jones' Sambo ass. And all these other sambos, we're going to get in all this shit, man. We're going to talk about rape culture. It's so funny how they try to put rape culture on us when it's all these goddamn dominant white society motherfuckers. I remember that one nigga, I forgot his name, the one white dude. I think he went to uh, Harvard. And he basically just raped the bitch. Like, gave her some shit, raped her, and she told. And they swept it under the rug. And then he actually ended up having to go to trial. They had him all on TV. You ain't never heard nothing about that nigga ever since. But when it's black folk, they keep showing it to you every day, all day, every day. That shit trips me out. Hey, shout out to uh, <laughs> shout out to all my begging ass niggas. There's a lot of begging niggas out here, man. It, 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 it's a lot of begging niggas, period, man. Just beg, just be begging, man. I had this conversation, man. I be having conversations all the time, man. This old ass white dude, man. <laughs> that nigga was saying some real shit, though. <laughs> He was saying some real shit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get into that too, man. A lot of these old white people, man, they gonna tell you the truth when they get it when they get it off their chest. They they get it off their chest because they don't want that burden of them being racist, so they want to get it off their chest. But the first thing of, of of understanding racism, white supremacy, is admitting that you are a racist. Because black people can't be racist because we don't control our own anything, and he talked about that. So we gonna get into that too. We're definitely going to talk about Joe Biden's clown ass and Barack Obama and all these other Sambo ass motherfuckers, man. Trying to vote Shane niggas and shit like that. And then we're going to get into this motherfucking white boy that went to this. He went to a Cincinnati Hills Christian Academy. And he is charged with rape, gross sexual imposition, and sexual battery. See, they're not talking about this motherfucker. His name is McEachin. McEachin or whatever the fuck his name is. We're going to get on that nigga too. Yeah, let me see. Make sure I spell that clown ass white boy's name right. Because, you know, when it comes to niggas, they plaster us all over the news all day long, all day strong. So, we're going to get into that shit too. We're going to get into all this rape culture. We're going to talk about To Kill a Mockingbird and how that white girl was getting, basically, getting abused by her dad. But the black dude just was trying to help out. So, she basically, when she got busted because she liked the black dude, she tried to say the black dude raped her. This shit been going on. The Emmett Till shit. I think that's what started the uh, uh, the Tulsa, Oklahoma bombing too. This girl was kissing this black dude, and when white people came on the elevator, got on the elevator, she, oh, he raped me. So that's how that started. So yeah, we gonna get into that, man. We are gonna talk about a lot of stuff. We gonna talk about how y'all conducting yourselves at these corporate plantations. Nigga, stop going to the job trying to fuck on every bitch that's at the job, man. God damn. No, I get it, man. I, I remember I worked at a corporate plantation. It was, it was a cesspool of fucking. I mean, as soon as a nigga brung out alcohol, the most astute 
managerial people in high position of power, they basically taking their pants down, just pulling their pants down, just letting a nigga know, you know, that type of shit. And I just look at these people like, man, you know, we got to work with these people. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to the homegirl, Noob. Noob, no. Some of these folks, man, these motherfuckers is crazy. Get them outside of that goddamn corporate annotation. You know, you know how a lot of these people are. That's why you go to these motherfucking job functions. You know, keep your composure. Don't get to drinking and acting no fool. Let them motherfuckers do that shit. Then you can see how they really are, man. Because a lot of this shit, man, I be like, God damn. And we're going to talk about the rape culture. We're going to talk about how when you think of rape, as I would like to call it, rap hey, they only, the stigma comes from the black folk. They don't come from everybody else. Was a motherfucker raping, man. What, what, what was he? Was he an African American? Like, no, nah, nigga, he was white. You sure he wasn't an African American? Come on. You know those niggers, they take pussy. They've been taking pussy since the slave days. No, nigga. No, the white bitches and everybody else was giving away pussy. And, 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 and let me tell you something. Black men was getting raped too. Cause you know those those white women back in the day, okay, if you don't fuck, I'ma say you raped. Me. So a nigga ain't had no choice. Yeah, man. Oh, don't think we was the first niggas. Let me tell you something. Before I get into this, other, let, let's get on this. Niggas was not the first niggas watching porno. It was the slave masters. When we were the, when, when the Moors ruled Spain, when the Moors ruled the Iberian Peninsula, they weren't watching no porno. They had their own harems of bitches. They didn't have time to be watching somebody else. Then it got to the Greeks and shit. Them Greeks was like, well, we want to watch everybody fuck. Then it passed on down the line. Then the slave days. What do you think the slave master was doing? Watching niggas fuck. Go ahead and fuck. I want to make sure y'all fuck. And I want to watch. Matter of fact, you know, matter of fact, I'm next type shit. Man, get the fuck out of here. Nigga, the, 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 the pornography industry did not come from black folks. That came from white folks. They just didn't like that. Once you got niggas on film, everybody else was like, damn. <laughs> For real? You know what I'm saying? So let's get that shit straight too and all that, you know, that's why I didn't like Giannis, whatever the fuck his name is in the championship, he's talking about, well, he liked his agent because he's Greek and I'm Greek. No, nigga, you're Nigerian. You're not Greek. You're not white. You are Nigerian. You are black. I don't care what language you speak. You better get that shit together, nigga. I'm tired of these motherfuckers, man. And I'm so tired of motherfuckers like, I, I, I really feel... In my heart, that a lot of people, I just think they they're paid by the dominant white society, so they'll come out and say anything, man. You know what I'm saying? And you just watch these people that's paid; they'll come out and say anything. Like right now, all this crime, all this shit going on. What the fuck is Jane Elliott and, and, and Tim Wise at? But nigga, I've been saying that shit all day. Hey, hey, hey! I got the ride music on today, shit. I've been saying this shit all. I, I've been having my my think cap on when it came to Tim Wise. I, I've said this a thousand times on this podcast. When you listen to him talk, oh, he's smooth. He's like a preacher. My mom and my daddy and I was raised. I, I just be listening. I'm like, okay, but you telling the shit we already know. What are, What is your solutions? Nigga never gave a solution. Never talked about reparations. Jane Elliott never talked about reparations. But Tim Wise, for all you Tim Wise fans, he talks shit about the Honorable Dr. Francis Chris Welsing. No, y'all don't know that. Go on YouTube and look up Nilly Fuller Jr. and Dr. Francis Gress Welsing discuss Tim Wise. Then go look up Tim Wise talking shit about Dr. Francis Gress Welsing. And they'll play it. I to drink my tea. I'm telling you, man. Don't let these motherfuckers fool you, man. You can do all that motherfucking... Oh, Tasha, what's happening? You can do all that. Hey, man. <laughs> See, y'all ought to get me to talk about some shit I should be talking about. And I'm about to get on, uh, where Tommy each at? I'm about to get on the Tavis clown ass. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> I'll talk to you about that another time. I'll just tell Tommy each to handle that. But anyway, that's that. this is family shit, man, y'all. But anyway, <laughs> but we gonna get into it, man, for real. Let's get into it, man. Let's talk about it. Let's discuss it. I'm gonna tell you what I think about the shit first thing I want to talk about is I want to talk about rape culture so let's get into it right now find a shit to cut this clown that shit down hey you know how 
they had the right music on today. Man, let's get on this shit today, man. Hey, man, what the fuck is up with the rape culture? And the reason why I bring this up, though, because, you know, when you watch uh, Breakfast Club and stuff, I've, I've heard them make references to, like, man, the 90s was rape culture and all this other stuff. And I get that, man. That's their perspective or whatever. Man, stop. Rape culture. I saw this thing on Instagram where it was a two short concert and it was this old elderly Filipino lady with this old white dude and this lady was singing every lyric of too short what's my favorite word bitch stop with the it, it, they always want to put rape culture on black folk no nigga when we were the Morris, we didn't have to rape nobody them bitches wanted to give up the pussy anyway so stop y'all need to go do the history of that shit that's one and two they want to put that stigma on us like it, it, it's almost like if you watch that uh uh that video by Sherelle, uh, what's her name? Is her name Sherelle? Oh God, with Alexander O'Neill and Sherelle. So I took you out. Only right, be nice. Oh, didn't mean to turn you on. Watch that video. It's her dancing with a big ass. They got a monkey in there break dancing and shit. I'm like, who the fuck came up with this idea? Or this mother, <laughs> or this motherfucking monkey? Like, who came up with this shit? I'm like, man, whoever came up with this idea, y'all niggas is tripping. You know, I'm just like King Kong. You know what I'm saying? They want King Kong is the nigga, and then he's saving a white girl. All this bullshit, man. It's like all this symbolism and shit. They always want to put the rape culture on us. And I noticed that because with the Bill Cosby shit, how many Sambos and Coons came out talking about, I think he should be in jail? You had Mark Lemoyce Hill. I ain't never really liked Mark Lemoyce Hill. I never really liked him, man, because when you see people on TV and they go super hard for shit that don't have nothing to do with black people, watch him. I mean, this man, when he got fired from CNN because he was making comments about Palestine, I'm like, no, nigga, you're supposed to get fired about making comments about racism, and white supremacy, and establishing a system of justice, not about making comments about helping the white Jewish community. They need all the help. They got all the help they need. So what the fuck you doing with that shit, man? I don't know. But better you than me, Mark Lemoyce. Yeah, I'm drinking this tea, man. This mullin tea, man. Y'all niggas need to go fuck with that shit. That shit bomb, too. That's another thing, too, man. R. Kelly, man. I got to bring it back to R. Kelly. And you got damn right. I'm not going to stop listening to R. Kelly music. Man, fuck what y'all niggas talking about. Yo, boo hoo tea. Yo, boo 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 tea. Nigga listening to it, nigga. Step in the name of love listening to that shit, too. I was watching The Shy, man. And on The Shy, they couldn't. They didn't even want to play. I'm like, how you going to talk about stepping but not play R. Kelly? Because don't nobody want to touch him because white folks said don't touch him. Just like Nick Cannon. Nick, look at what Nick, if, if black folks really had his back, Nick Cannon wouldn't have had to go on there and do all that. But Nick Cannon had to go on and do all that because, you know, he got a family to feed. He got mouths to feed. Nigga's like, so? No, well then why don't you go to your corporate plantation job, nigga? And what I want you to do is when you go to your corporate, corporate plantation job, stand on the desk and tell all the white people there, fuck you. You racist motherfuckers and kiss my ass. You do that. And then show me a video, and then maybe everybody else will start doing it. But I doubt that any nigga gonna do that, because they not gonna fuck up their check. So just like y'all not gonna fuck up y'all check, stop asking niggas like Nick Cannon to fuck up his, man. Nick Cannon do a lot of shit for a lot of black people. You know what I'm saying? I'm glad I'm glad Nick Cannon done let things pass. R.I.P. to Keisha Cole's mom, too, man. That really, really fucked with me. And the reason why that fucked with me is because, you know, they were a real family that was really trying to get it together. It was just a lot of trauma. That's why I'm very, you know, leery about that stuff. And I, I, I don't, you know, you start putting all that stuff on there, especially when you, you, you start bringing your family in there. It's like you prostituting your family to make a buck. And I remember I had an opportunity to do that because we used to have a lot of conversations. You know, my mom was alive. And I remember some of my siblings, they wanted us to start, because I used to be recording shit all the time and posting on YouTube. And it's like, you should just record us and start putting it on YouTube. And I thought about it, but I was like, I knew it would blow up because my family is funny. And the shit that we had going on at my mom's house was funny. So, but I just didn't want to do it, man, because I'm like, nah, man, this shit will cause a whole bunch of problems, man. <laughs> Niggas get to fighting and shit. You know, especially when you start talking, you know, you have your little green screen shit. You start talking to shit. Oh, is YouTube is tripping? Look, somebody told me YouTube is tripping. Man, YouTube always tripping, man. That shit don't bother me. That shit don't bother me at all, man. You already know how it is.
that shit don't bother me. But I tell you, man, I, I thought about it and I was like, nah. And then when I watched uh, Keisha Cole with her family on here, on there, on TV, it was a really, it was a sad show, but it was good. You could tell Keisha Cole dealt with a lot of trauma. Her mom did, her sisters did, her family that came. You know, black folks, we have a lot of like trauma, and not just trauma, a lot of negative impact. You know, has taken shape and form in our lives, man. You, you know. And a lot of times we don't know how to deal with it because they just tell you to go to the black church. I mean, I think they had uh, uh, I forgot his one. I forgot the one nigga name. The nigga that looked like a gopher, the pastor, or whatever. He a big time hustler. They have on there. And I, a lot of times, I don't think that pastors are bad. They might be good. They had a perspective. Maybe you can have a clinical psychiatrist, but I think a lot of the times. It's just nobody wants to express the trauma that they went through because it makes you look weak. It makes you appear weak, like you don't know what the fuck you got going on and you letting that affect you. I think that I think that's the big problem too. But it was sad, man, watch watching that man, because I, I watched that show. I was a show, I was a fan of that. That made me a fan of Keisha Cole for real. You know what I'm saying? R.I.P. to her moms, man. That made me a fan for real. So, you know, god damn, that's fucked up, man. And right on her birthday, so that was fucked up. You know, so you know, we got to send that good energy Keisha Cole's way. You know, honestly, let me say something about Keisha Cole. A lot of women need to conduct themselves like her. You don't never really hear her on no bullshit at all. At all. I'm talking about you don't never hear her in no drama. You don't never hear her in no bullshit. I remember when she was on Love and Hip Hop, she didn't do no scenes hardly with nobody. <laughs> she kept doing the same scenes with the same people. <laughs> I was dying laughing. That's, I was like, that's a person that's like, nah, I'm controlling my environment. You know what I'm saying? So much love and respect to Keisha Cole, man. She's dope. You know what I'm saying? You just never hear no bullshit about her. Even with her mom, that stuff, you you know, of course, you know, there was, you know, drugs. But come on, man. When you flood the hood with crack cocaine, George W. Bush. And what was it? Nancy Reagan talking about just say no. So y'all going to flood the communities with crack. And then kids parents are you know crack addicts and then turn around and throw them in prison but y'all the ones who put the crack out there that's that's what i'm saying it, it, it reminds me of the of the corporate plantation when you had a, a corporate plantation i've worked at a lot of them and you see them do some bogus bullshit and you be like well y'all the ones who did the bogus bullshit and then when it's time to clean it up i've never seen for the most part any dominant white society take person take any accountability for their actions at the court plantation the much, and they fuck up a lot they don't never take accountability for none of that and that's just like the government that's just like United States of America Incorporated you know what I'm saying like I said when I was having this conversation with this old it was an old ass white dude and he was like talking about how he was in the army and all this other stuff and he was like yeah you know you know he just got to talking you know he got a rambling and shit but a lot of these white folk they gonna tell you and he was like look man my dad was racist and I was that way until I started being around other races. And he was like, especially with, with black folk. You know what I'm saying? He was like, and I was racist too. And then when I started being around black people, I'm like, hey man, this is not what the fuck y'all said was going on. He was like, and I feel like a lot of it is the media. A lot of it is the government. And I kept, I kept saying, what you mean? And he was basically like, he was basically like, they don't, they want to put a basically a negative, this ain't my words, a white person. They want to put a negative image out of black people. They don't want to help black people. This this not come from me. This fucked me up. He's like, they don't want to help black people with nothing. But they always want to make it seem like black people are the people on drugs. And black people are the ones robbing and stealing and all that. He was like, he's like, they don't never put white people on TV for that shit. They don't never. He was like, when is the last time you ever seen that? Where's a white person on TV for committing, committing a crime? He's like, it's always black people. He's like, it's always them. He was like, if y'all would give them the money and, and the shit that they need, that shit wouldn't be going on at all and they know that and i just basically was like just listening you know i don't get hyped up i'm not young so i you know i don't get hyped up yeah 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 you from me I, look it's easy to talk off code when you're around black people or whatever but what are you saying what are you telling us when we're not in the room and what's mo what is what is most important to me what are you telling us when we're not in the room and a lot of people in my personal opinion they ain't gonna do that 
which brings me to the next subject. And the reason why I'm talking about rape culture and that's the subject is because we always get that stigma. It's always us in our music and our rap. Look, let me tell you something. I listen to everything. Sugar Free, one of my favorite rappers. I'm talking about Street Gospel, one of my favorite CDs. I like I like the second album too, though. Y'all gonna make me angry enough. I like that album. And I like uh, Just Add Water. That album is dope too. <laughs> That album is dope. And then Smell My Finger. Oh, yeah, I'm a big-time Sugar Free fan. But I'm not going to turn around and talk about he talking about rape culture. No, nigga. Some women want to do that. Some niggas want to do that. Sell their ass and sell, you know, nigga. That's not rape culture. So then who's the ra- who's the raper? Who's the rapist then? The person that's paying for the pussy? Stop. That's a that's a equivalent of a good transaction to me. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and when you... I don't like that we get that stigma. Like our culture and our music gets the rape culture stigma. Like we the ones out here raping bitches and shit every day and walking around here just like, yeah, I'm gonna rape this bitch. Like that shit is crazy, man. But then when it comes to white people, you never hear about it. Like Harvey Weinstein. You're like, what you mean, Warren? I'm gonna keep saying this. R. Kelly and Bill Cosby were the poster childs of rap hey, sexual misconduct, all that shit. But you got... Jeffrey Epstein and Harvey Weinstein basically just sending bitches to Pedophile Island that they don't never talk about, right? They don't never talk about that shit at all. But we we're the people that's the the the, the stigma of, of of rape culture. So I'm gonna see if they have a video on this this dude. His name is Crossley McEachin. You know what I'm saying? And he was 18 years old. He go to this school out there in Ohio, a Christian, a Christian academy too. See, motherfuckers be thinking white people are Christians that they good for. Stop. He encountered the unconsciousness victim in a bedroom at the home in Simmons or Simmons, Simes, whatever the fuck it is, township. Then stripped her naked and began assaulting her. Oh, so you just straight stole the pussy when she, you did some shit from kids. If y'all ever seen that movie Kids, that nigga was like, shh, shh, don't say nothing, it's Casper. And this bitch was doped up and didn't know what the fuck was going on. He just pinned that bitch's legs up and started raping that bitch. It's Casper, it's Casper. Go watch that movie Kids. One of the, one of the dudes in that movie, he dead. You know? But this is the type of shit that I'm talking about. Let's see if we can find some. And you know they don't never, ever, ever had that type of shit on the news. Y'all know that they don't never have that shit. That, that old white man was right. It's not just him. It's a lot of people that be like, bro, y'all don't never have nothing on the news when it kind of y'all, when it kind of black people, y'all post the shit all over the fucking place to the point where we couldn't stop looking at R. I was like, okay, we get it. Don't play his music. I'm going to still play his music. What the fuck is y'all niggas talking about? Niggas want to say that when they was making money off of them. Now they can't make no money. So now motherfuckers want to do that whole ass shit. That's why I'm like, bro, this shit is crazy, man. Erica, man, what's happening? I see you. Tasha said that the YouTube is tripping. <laughs> but yeah, man. Rape culture, rape culture does not belong to us. Rape culture belongs to the dominant white society. Facts. As they raped, robbed, and, and pillaged every chance they got. And then every time you start looking into the future and you start looking in 2021, 2022 and all these rape charges and allegations. I did a podcast on that FBI agent. I think out of Louisiana, he was raping bitches too. And motherfucker, nothing. They didn't even put it on the news. I had to, I was searching for like 45 minutes before I did the podcast to see if they had anything on this dude. Like I'm talking about news shit. And this dude was a part of law enforcement. Raping women. Oh, you know he's raping the black women at that. You know, this is what these motherfuckers do. Now, y'all tell me, let a nigga think about raping a bitch in his mind. Guilty, nigga. Come here. Hey, man, what, what, why are you talking to me, officer? You're under arrest for rape. Rape? Man, I wasn't even, I wasn't even there, man. I got witnesses. Yeah, I know you got witnesses, but you were thinking about it, nigga. So, guilty, nigga. You was already thinking about it. So, you're a guilty nigga. So, fuck out of here. Why you not taking him to jail? We are taking you to jail. Then why y'all digging this this underground tunnel? Nigga, that's your cell. So get the shovel, get the digging, nigga. That's what's going on. You're not going, you're going under the jail. 
Like, that's the type of shit that they have going on for us. But when it's the dominant white society, these motherfuckers will stop and take you to Burger King and, hey, are you okay? Uh, you know, how you feeling? Do you want to check yourself into a mental facility? You know, is everything okay? You know, here, I'll call your mom. Hey, we got your son. You know, this person saying he raped her, but, you know, she was riding his dick, so I don't think it was a rape. You guys want to come and get up? That's the type of shit that they do for white folks. I, I ain't never seen so many get-out-of-jail-free cars I've seen in my motherfucking life for the dominant society. But for black folk, don't even think about that shit. And when I'm talking about don't even think about it, don't look, don't touch, don't think about it. Straight up. Straight up and down. Them motherfuckers gonna be guilty, nigga. What, what, you, what you mean? All of a sudden, I didn't even do nothing. Oh, nigga, you was thinking about it. Like, that might as well be a crime. They might as well just make that up. They do it anyway. They might as well just be like, you're under arrest for thinking about it. What you mean? Think, well, I saw you looking at it. So, you know, reasonable, reasonable suspicion. So, guilty, nigga. But, man, I didn't even do nothing. Well, you was looking over there. I wasn't even looking that way. Yeah, but the way you was looking, it was a white person over there. So, guilty, nigga. That's the type of shit that go on. When there's a white person, hey, man, that white man is raping that woman. He's not raping her. Man, he's pinning her down. She likes it. Fucking dumb niggers. You guys wanted it anyway. Like, that's how they feel, man. Motherfuckers be thinking I'll be tripping, but that's how they really feel on the inside, man. <laughs> I don't give a fuck what y'all niggas is talking about. That's why let them wear that jacket of the rape culture. And I wanted to talk about this specifically because when I was looking at this dude, I was like, now let me see if I can find any video on him. They wanna and they wanna play everything but any video that has to do with talking about what the fuck he did. You know what I'm saying? But Bill Cosby, every fucking day they was talking about Bill Cosby. Every fucking day. Every day. And what tripped me out was you gotta keep looking. When it's white people, you gotta keep looking over and over again. It's true. When it's white crimes, you got to keep looking over and over again. Let me see if I can find something. You got to keep looking over and over again. But when it's black folk, shit. Man, you could be at the mosque praying and them motherfuckers be like, he ain't at the mosque. He in there taking pussy. Go get him, officer. Them motherfuckers come in there and get your ass. It could be a white person with pinning down a bitch while another white person is helping them pin her down and straight taking the pussy and police officers will be like hey do you need help you guys are crazy kids you know you know that that don't do that in public take that behind closed doors you guys have a good night that type of shit fuck out of here man i'm telling you motherfuckers think i'm tripping i've seen it a lot of i've seen it so many times that's why i'll be like man this shit is some bullshit motherfuckers don't motherfuckers think that it ain't no rape culture but it is let me see if I can find this motherfucker. What the fuck is this nigga's name? This nigga's name is Cro this nigga's name is Croswell. Uh -oh. <laughs> that's that's nigga's attorney's name, Croswell. Right. And then then the nigga that did the rape is Crossley. Get the fuck out of here. That's why I said, man, I don't want to hear that shit, man. I'm gonna see if I can find some on YouTube. Let's see if I can find something. Let's see. So just bear with me. See if they let me see if they gonna play something. Let's see. I doubt it though. Let's see. Alright. Let's see if they Okay, I found some. Let's see what they say though. A standout high school football. Oh, they actually had some on the news. I was looking all day. Ain't this a bitch? The phone was probably listening to me anyway. Because you know the phones be listening. But here we go. Let's see what they say. A standout high school football player headed to play college ball this fall. Now facing sex assault charges. 18-year-old Crosley McEachin of Anderson Township just graduated. Crosley McEachin. A dominant society motherfucker. Just stealing pussy. Nigga, what is... That's the shit that I don't get. And it's always them. I'm not talking about that. It, we don't have some in our bunch, but nine times out of ten, it ain't no foundational black American. It's a dominant white society or any other racial group going around getting their rocks off. That's their bucket list. Let me see how many pussies I can take. 
Cincinnati Hills Christian Academy, where he played football and basketball and signed to play college football at the University of St. Francis in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Oh, he going to still go to college. Ain't nothing going to happen. Because ain't nobody you talking about. Because don't nobody know. It ain't on CNN. He was arrested in June. Court documents allege around 5 a.m. on December 6, he went to a home in the Loveland area where a teen girl was asleep in a bedroom alone. She woke up and realized Crosley McKeachin was on top of her and having intercourse with her. What did I tell y'all? Just like the movie Kids, go look up the movie Kids. If you go look up the movie Kids, at the end of the scene, this nigga, this white boy was... This, this bitch was so out of her mind on that on that on them drugs and shit. She was on dope. They was dope fiends. All the kids was skateboarders and dope fiends. You know they had a nigga in the in, in in the show. I think he killed himself too. But the nigga that was on the show, he was a dope fiend too. And they was all skaters, but they was dope fiends out of New York. Whatever. Well, the end of the, at the end of the movie, the nigga name was Casper, and the nigga was just straight taking the pussy. Talking about it's Casper, it's Casper. And motherfuckers was laughing at that shit, and I was just like. Looking like, well, nigga, that ain't really funny. I remember high school, my mother was like, yeah, man, it's cat. Like, that shit ain't funny, nigga, at all. I didn't think that shit was funny at all. Motherfuckers riding around and, and, and on skateboards and shit and biting and acting a fool and then raping bitches and shit, getting them all dope up. Like, if you got a dope a bitch up to fuck, then you got self-esteem issues. Now, she want to dope herself up. That's different. But the nigga was doing exactly what this. This is the new and improved Casper. Crosley McKeachin is Casper. That's who he is. And I'm not talking about the motherfucking friendly ghost either. Pushed him off of her and realized she was naked, despite wearing clothes when she went to sleep. In November, one month prior, at a different home, McKeachin is accused of grabbing the girls behind. Then she sat down on the bed, and when she tried to get up and move away from him, he pushed her back down. She fled the house, court documents allege. He's charged with gross sexual imposition, rape, and sexual battery. Oh, yeah, this nigga is just, oh, this is the hillside strangler, new and improved. This is the, the pussy side strangler. This nigga just going around like, well, I'm white and I'm just going to take pussy. Y'all can put my face up there, but let me tell you what he thinking. Y'all can put my face up there, but I'm white and this system is for me. And I got bread, so my lawyer, I'll just throw my lawyer at it. And I'll get a slap on the wrist and I'll end up meeting a bitch and getting married and having kids and still taking pussy on the side. It ain't a goddamn thing y'all motherfuckers going to do because this system is beneficial for me. Great. When reached by phone, his attorney, Scott Croswell, said they are unproven allegations and we intend to aggressively defend them. Basically, it's that bitch's word versus his. She might be a white bitch, but he's a white man. And this system is set up for dominant white society men first. White bitches second. You white bitches are minorities. <laughs> that's, that's how they look at it. Oh, well. <laughs> in a statement, Cincinnati Hills Christian Academy wrote in part, the alleged incident did not occur on school property, nor during a school-sponsored event. Which means, translation, this ain't got shit to do with us. This one on school property, and it had nothing to do with us, so don't bring our name into it and fuck what y'all niggas is talking about. CHCA is saddened for the individuals and family affected by this alleged incident, and our prayers remain with them. And McKeachin is currently... Them niggas said our prayers, translation, we gonna pray for you, bitch, but it looks like he probably gonna get off, and uh, if I was you, I just wouldn't fuck with him no more, because ain't shit gonna happen to him. That's what they saying. Out on bond and due back in court on Wednesday for a pretrial hearing. I did reach out to the University of St. Francis to see if he is still enrolled and still on the team. I did not hear back tonight. Reporting live at the Hamilton County Courthouse, Jatara McGee, WNWT News 5. <laughs> oh, man, let me cut the music back on. That's funny. The motherfuckers don't give a fuck, man. I just thought I would touch on that, man, because I, th I thought that was important. I know everybody else got their own topics and, and other channels got their own topics, but I be trying to touch on shit that ain't nobody really talking about so you can see yourself. Why, Warren? Because it's important. They give us rape culture, and we take it. And be going with the shit. Oh, yeah, man. Hip-hop was rape culture. Nigga, what? What the fuck you mean hip-hop was rape culture? No, nigga. Their shit is rape culture. Not hip-hop. Nigga, don't blame that shit on us. But I'll tell you this, man. These are just things that we got to wake up to. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and let me tell you this, too. Motherfuckers, stop getting so frustrated with the system and just try to replace it. Stop getting...
getting upset because other racial groups don't want to stand up. They're not going to stand up. That's not their job. When you go to the corporate plantation, stop looking around and see who's going to stand up. Hey, man, look at the resources that you have at the corporate plantation and go on and do what you got to do. These people are not going to stand up for you. These people are not going to help you. And they're not going to stand up on no real purpose because it, why would it benefit them to stand up for black folk? So what you do is you get in there and get the fuck out. Don't go in there thinking that everybody, you know, don't go on the job talking about, man, y'all see the George Floyd uh, statues and... Man, y'all see that? And nah, man, for what? I wouldn't even. I don't even talk about that shit. I ain't never did that shit at all in a long time. And I'm probably. I'm talking about the last time I ever really had a conversation about race at a job was probably like ten years ago, and it was not even something I started. It was something that somebody else sparked and started the conversation. And they kind of asked my opinion. I was just like, I don't. And I, I remember at the time, just kind of was like, well, it is what it is. Oh well, that's not. Yeah, it is what it is. You're not gonna change it. And I'm not here to entertain people about my opinion because a lot of the times the dominant white society and other racial groups, they like to see you all emotional and getting all pissed off and arguing and trying to plead your case because then they've done their job. When you don't get emotional, that's when they be looking at you upside your head. Like, why the fuck is this motherfucker acting like that? Well, the motherfucker acting like that because he ain't got shit to say. A lot of the times they, they want you to go out of your way to be running your mouth about shit that don't concern you because then they... That's the whole, that's the oldest managerial tactic in the book. Well, let me make this person feel important because then I'll get them to start talking about personal things that I want to know about them because they sizing you up the whole time. Real white people don't give a fuck what you got going on. And I've been around them. Real white people at the core plantation, they don't give a fuck about none of that shit. They don't even care. They'll be like, hey man, how's it going? That's it. Hey, what you think about this? Such, such, such. All right. That's it. They don't give a fuck. They not, they don't care. They don't want to know what you got going on personally. They don't want to know who you fucking. They don't care about none of that shit. They trying to get that bread and get the fuck up out of there. Very seldom you'll work around those people. The majority of the type of people you're going to work around is a bunch of gossipy ass bitches. I'm talking about men that's at the job. They just gossip. They don't have no type of testicular fortitude. They don't know how to move forward or look to the future. Only thing they want to do is come to work and gossip and worry about what other motherfucking niggas is doing. And these are men. And this shit blew my fucking mind. And a lot of it is, maybe it's, they grew up with our fathers. Shout out to No Compromise Podcast. That's my nigga over there. Them niggas need to go watch that. And I'm not, and it ain't really niggas that act like that at the job. It be other racial groups. Most niggas, when you work around them, I'm going to be honest with you. Most niggas that I done worked around, they come to work, they do their job, and they get the fuck away. They don't want to be bothered. They not trying to stay after. They not trying to do no extra. I'm telling you, and I learned a lot from that. Because a lot of times, you know, when you don't have... I would say manhood in your life or a father figure. I'm talking about for this, for your generation growing up. Because a lot, of, a lot of parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles, they're disconnected from your your generation and your age. There's an age gap. So they don't really know what's going on. They don't really know how to tell you. You know what I'm saying? So it's different when you go to a work and then you're around older black people and they like, nah, man, be easy on that. We don't really do that. Like I said, when I worked at Opportunity Village, all I did was watch all the other black people. Black people didn't even really get along, but a lot of people did not know that at the at the court plantation. They didn't know that shit. I didn't even know that shit until one of another black person was like, yeah, they don't fuck with each other like that. I was like, damn. They like, but hey, man, we all we got, so y'all can put that shit to the side. And I've seen them do it. I've seen other people, you know, when they get ready to get into a pull up to the side, don't do that shit here. You know what I'm saying? I, I've very seldom. Have I worked in places like that? The majority of the places I work in, motherfuckers want to show out in front of white people and talk crazy and, and then get a white person on their side and then, you know, build that white person up and then that white person pro allegedly thinks you cool. It's a bunch of bullshit, man. So I'm telling y'all niggas right now, man, wake up. Rape culture is not our thing. Don't let them put that jacket on us. We're not wearing that. Rape culture is a part of the dominant white society. It's not our shit. Stop. You, I'm not I'm not letting you frame that narrative and do that. And you're like, well, why are we talking about that? Because Bill Cosby, the sexual misconduct. R. Kelly, the sexual misconduct. But Harvey Weinstein and Jeffrey, Ep Jeffrey Epstein, allegedly he killed himself. But Harvey Weinstein still walking around here. And they put Bill, Bill Cosby in prison on some falsified advertisement bullshit. And then they knew they was wrong. They knew they was probably about to get sued. So what they did was, okay, we're just going to let him out because, you know, that was it was wrong. And they got everybody thinking it was some type of a glitch or some shit. Stop. Oh, but he was drugging women. He never said he was drugging women. 
He said everybody was taking Quaaludes. There's a difference between everybody taking, okay, that's like in the 2000 era. Oh, they drugged me. Have you ever did XZ before? Oh shit, I do X all the time. Well, they didn't drug you. Did they drug you that day? No, nah, I asked for one. Do you go ask everybody? Did that person ask for some XZ? Yeah, they asked for some X. Well, then how did somebody drug you? You wanted to be drugged. You know what the fuck was going on. You can't take the drugs and then get to acting the food and be like, oh my God, they raped me. That's almost like that white motherfucker that was calling those women nigga bitches and shit. And they's like, hey bro, your mic is hot. And that motherfucker's like, oh, my A1C. Oh, Lord Jesus. My A1C. I would have been a dude next to him like, your A1C? What you mean? Oh, oh my diabetes. What's wrong with your diabetes? Oh, I need my EpiPen. Nigga, you don't have an EpiPen. Oh, well, it's flaring up. What you mean? You said it's under control. You just told me it's under control 20 minutes ago. That motherfucker switched that tune and hid behind his diabetes after calling these women a whole bunch of nigga bitches and shit. This is what the fuck is going on, but motherfucker want to let Bill Cosby and R. Kelly wear the rape jacket. Nah, fuck that. These niggas is wearing a rape jacket, like Bill Clinton and all the other motherfuckers, like Thomas Jefferson and George Washington and all the other white supremacists with they wig wearing asses. These niggas was cross-dressers before that nigga, they invented cross-dressing. I'm like, why all these motherfuckers dress like bitches, got wigs on and shit? It's like, what the fuck is going on? And then you look at J. Edgar Hoover, you're like, oh, so y'all been doing this. This crowd just wearing panties and drawers and shit. Panties and bras and shit and shawls and dressing like Mrs. Roper. Man, get the fuck out of here, nigga. Y'all niggas is crazy. So y'all not gonna allow me to do that. And they pushing a Pacific agenda. This LBGTQBTLYC, whatever. Look, man, y'all black people need to understand. I fuck with you. You my people. But stop letting these people gas you up. Where's Ed Buck and why the fuck his ass ain't in prison? This nigga get everybody. Now, why ain't, why ain't nobody suing him? This nigga get him high on crystal meth and then they die in his place. And don't nobody ever say, hey, man, why the fuck these dudes keep dying in your place? That's some Jeffrey Dahmer shit. What you doing? Motherfucker want to be like, oh, I don't know how they die. Well, nigga, you doing the drugs too. So, yeah, because you're not giving yourself as much as you probably not even doing the shit. You probably watching them do the shit and you like, you like watching them overdose and die. Motherfuckers get off on that shit too. Y'all need to understand. Go read Medical Apartheid. If they was doing that shit in the antebellum period, then what the fuck you think they doing now? One minute is hot. Next minute is cold. I know that chemtrail shit is real. That's why a lot of times I don't even like to go outside. Just like right now, motherfuckers like, oh, yeah, man, COVID is over. The economy's back to normal. Motherfuckers in Cali, in Cali was like, nah, nigga, it's not over. It's going up a 1,000 cases a week. Put the mask back on. <laughs> Agenda 21 is real. Population control is real. Y'all niggas better wake the fuck up. But, hey, man, hey, it's been one. I appreciate everybody out there fucking with your boy. You already know what it is. Start your Erica. You already know. I know YouTube probably tripping. Who gives a fuck, man? As long as y'all niggas know what it is, man. Each one teach 21. Because that's all you can do. Because if you don't teach, each one don't teach 21, it's been one. Hey, man, if you out here talking about I don't see no color, guilty, nigga. I don't fuck with you. I'm out. Peace.